Hello everybody and welcome to a very, very different video. I like doing these kind of blog videos where I just kind of talk about something in my life or something that is, you know, uh, interesting to me, which I hope also maybe interests the viewer yourself. So I want to talk a bit about my experience learning to ride a road bike. What is a road bike? Well, that's a uh, Everyone knows about the standard uh, bikes that you buy for like, I don't know, $500 or, or whatever. Road bikes is a lightweight kind of bike that uh, makes it a lot more fun and easier to go for long rides if you have the money to spend on it and the equipment that is needed. So I want to show the bike and then we will uh, talk a bit about that. So, I talked a bit about money before, but actually I have gotten this bike from a family and it's 20 years old, surprisingly, he kept it really well. He has got new um, wheels on it, so these are Campagnolo, they are excellent, very good high-end brand. Um, the wheels on a bike is probably the most expensive part that you buy for like an average consumer. There are other parts that are also really expensive, but all the wheels for some reason just cost a huge amount of money uh, compared to other uh, similar uh, components on a bike. It's mostly due to the weight, so a lot of road bikes uh, are, are very obsessive about how much they weigh. Like I can, you know, even if it's 20 years old and it's an aluminium frame, I can easily lift it up. It's not a problem at all, and that's kind of the point of these bikes here. They are supposed to be really lightweight. And even though it's 20 years old, yes, 20 years old, it's a bit amazing. It really keeps it well. Another fun thing is that it's a Peugeot. So they are a French uh, car maker, but back in like the 90s, they were doing uh, uh, normal road bikes as well. So that was for the, like the Tour de France or whatever, they were a really big uh, brand in uh, bike consumers back then. But as we all know, this sport has uh, an unfortunate history with uh, doping and that is why they probably decided to uh, get out of this uh, market. It sucks, really the sport has uh, killed itself with doping and, and stuff like that. Uh, there's not much more to say about that. So I want to talk a little about how to get into the sport. Oh, so the first, some of the first things you need to get is, I suggest that you get a bike like myself. So a lot of people will say this looks totally stupid on a bike, but it's very handy. So you need to get some tubes because you're going to get a flat at some point, And then you need one of these little things here. Uh, you could buy two of these, but for the most part you only need one. And then you need uh, a pump. This has to be a small one, so it can't just be a, a little one, because you have to be able to have a pump uh, when you're out there riding on the bike. So I have mine just kind of positioned it weirdly uh, at the seat. Another thing you can also do is position the pump in these brackets here, which uh, normally p uh, road bikes have. And then you obviously need a holder for your water bottle. And that's pretty much it. So besides the bike, those are the main things that you need. If you get an actual road bike, you also need to use uh, cleat pedals. But luckily these uh, shoes are not too expensive. Um, I can just quickly go out and show so I actually had mine uh, borrowed from family and uh, as you can see they are very used like <laughs> yeah you wouldn't think that these would uh, be very uh, good at all but it doesn't really matter if they are used or whatever they just work so much better than uh, you know riding with your normal shoes on. Learning cleat pedals are not an easy thing at all but you kind of have to. If you are serious about the sport, you really do want to learn about uh, cleat pedals. For me, it took about two or three tries and then I was kind of into it. But that is also because I did know a bit about them uh, beforehand. Basically, 
you position your foot like this and then you just click down on it and when you need to get out you click your your foot this way so you turn your foot like that it basically just requires a lot of strength in your legs to click into them which is probably the hardest thing and then when you're at a, at a stop you know red lights or whatever you need to learn to be able to click out and put your foot down in the ground and that's pretty much it it can be a bit annoying at first, but it's it's much more comfortable, especially uh, if you're doing mountain biking. Uh, click pedals are a superior choice because if you're out in the forest and there's a lot of bumps and whatnot, having your feet strapped to the pedals helps a lot. It's not a very safe thing having your feet not being able to touch the ground really fast if you're crashing, but uh, your feet stays on the pedals, which just makes them. Uh, you know, you're able to feel more safe and fast like that. Um, another thing I also want to mention real fast about my experience. Since this is a board bike, um, I have some height issues. So my f uh, frame, you mo my height is not that big. You need to be able to adjust. Uh, I can't even remember the handlebars here. They, uh, most bikes can adjust this little pink thing here, but that requires, uh, you know, a little more modern bike and whatnot. Another thing you should also consider is, uh, you should get an embraco, or I can't remember what they're called in English, but basically you need to be able to adjust the seat height, which you probably have a tool for anyways, but that, that is also a little thing you need to worry about, because it's all about being comfortable, and being able to kind of fit on the bike because if you don't do that you're gonna get a lot of injuries and strains on your legs and muscles and whatnot if the bike doesn't fit yourself but i want to talk a little about quickly now is that i actually been enjoying having a bike for the first time even if it's like old and and borrowed and whatnot it's just a lot of fun it takes a while like normally i just run um so I run for like half an hour, 20 minutes or whatever, and then I'm kind of done. Easy. You just put on your shoes and go. On a bike, you kind of have to go for like an hour uh, to maybe three hours or something like that to kind of feel that you've been out riding. Uh, that is a bit more, you know, a little more commitment than putting on your running shoes and whatnot. I kind of like to do exercise that are fast and and gives me results. I don't like to do too much uh, training, I suppose. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that was uh, pretty much it. So it's been fun to learn it. And uh, maybe you could also uh, uh, tell me a bit about your own uh, thoughts on, on your own sports you like to do and, and whatnot.